In a recent video, I compared the Lixada Little Bug inspired stove with the IKEA Hobo stove. And one of my viewers asked afterwards, what would happen if I took the Lixada stove and placed it on top of the IKEA Hobo stove? I thought, you know, this may answer a question I've been looking for an answer for for some time, which is how to turn the IKEA into a wood gas stove. If you're interested in seeing if it'll work, keep watching. Okay, before we begin the test, it's going to be a little different than the other comparison tests that we've done in the past where we've compared different stoves against each other. Because today, of course, I'm going to be using an IKEA stove and the, a modified one at that. But the only way to compare that fairly is against another IKEA hobo stove. So I have two IKEA hobo stoves, one being modified with the Lixada Little Bug inspired stove on top. So I'm not going to use the usual criteria of compactness, weight, value, versatility, and those types of things. However, I will be comparing it in terms of how quickly the, uh, it, each of the stoves brings two cups of water to a boil. I also want to take a closer look at the modified IKEA stove to see if it does behave like a wood gas stove. So this comes as a result of some questions I have been asking myself and a few people have offered comments on my videos as well is that you can, may be able to get more efficiency from the IKEA hobo stove if you were able to wrap something around the outside of it like a piece of aluminum flashing or stainless steel or some material that you can wrap around the outside restricting airflow from the side while not restricting it from the bottom and of course not from the top. The concept is is not so much heat is lost to side breezes as you saw in a recent video. Uh, a little breeze on the side of an Ikea can really rob a lot of the heat away and cause it to become almost like a blowtorch, a small forge. And that's not the most efficient way to have a stove work. So if you can at least control airflow, you should be able to get a better burn, longer burn, more controllable burn, ultimately is what you're looking for. So that's what I hope to get from using some type of a flashing or some type of an enclosure. But if the Lixada Little Bug inspired stove works well over top of it, I may have multi-use, something that I can use separately, something I can use as a windscreen for alcohol stoves, and something that may turn the IKEA into a wood gas stove. So that's what we're going to be testing out today. Now, at the same time, I wanted to address a couple of other things that happened in recent videos and comments from other viewers. You will also notice, and of course, I'm going to put the links to eat the first the video comparing the, this stove against uh, the, those two stoves together as well as the more recent video where I compared the Lixada against the vegetable steamer stove. I'll put those links up in the corner and or at the end of the video and probably in the show notes below as well because a couple of things happened. In the video where I compared the vegetable steamer against the IKEA, you'll note as that I, at the end of it, I had commented that there was so much heat generated that it actually started to melt the aluminum crossbars I had created for the IKEA stove. People had a lot of people had suggestions on how that could be improved or prevented in a in a new modification. I have an answer, some based on what the uh, some of the people had commented and something I found, and I'll I'll share that with you in a second. Uh, I also want to show you how you can actually probably use the Lixada Little Bug Stove with the vegetable steamer. Another interesting combination. But another viewer commented on the fact that I wasn't wearing my classic Tilly hat that I often wear in the woods. I didn't look as hardcore here in my backyard. And I thought, yeah, it, would, it may be a little bit of overkill. But I put a hat on today that I've been wanting to give a shout out to the person who gave it to me for some time. And this is, I'll bring it in close, the Avoiding Chores hat. And a friend of mine, well, a friend of mine, we actually haven't met, strangely enough. We both live in the same city. He's here in the Halifax area somewhere, and we actually haven't met in person. But this is a person who inspired me to start making videos way back in the day. And his name is Jim Sear, and he has a website called Avoiding Chores. Of course, I'm going to be putting the link to Jim's channel in the show notes below, as well as to his website, so you can check him out. Jim's channel started out as bushcraft and GPS and... Uh, that type of uh, related content, but he has moved pretty much exclusively, not entirely, but pretty much exclusively to all things GPS. So if you are interested in GPS related materials for the woods, as well as some other content that he has, you might want to check Jim's channel out. Okay, let's get down to the stone top and I'll show you the modifications that we've made as well as the enhancements I have for the IKEA stove. Okay, before we get started with the actual tests, I thought I would show you a few things. Um, these are the crossbars that I had in the last test, and you can see where the heat melted the aluminum. 
Uh, that's the first time I'd had that happen. Mostly probably I usually use the IKEA hobo stove in a sheltered area without being exposed to the wind. So when the wind got started to run through it, it just increased the heat tremendously and that was the result. So a number of people had made suggestions on uh, using pieces of iron bar, using a set of uh, metal tongs, stainless steel tongs that could be laid across the top. All good suggestions, but I was looking for something that was both inexpensive, available to everybody, and easy to turn into a set of cross stands. So here's what I came up with. This is a stainless steel ruler, metal ruler, that I picked up at Walmart for 97 cents Canadian. So obviously I picked up a couple of them at 97 cents each. If you can find them at your local Walmart, this was extremely easy to turn into a set of cross stands. No Dremel tool required. All I used, quite literally, was just a hacksaw blade. So uh, it was very easy to cut with the hacksaw. And when it came to the little notches here, I made two hacksaw cuts. I did use a pair of needle nose pliers to bend it and the material popped out. I did, you know, take the edges down with a little bit of uh, wet dry sandpaper just so they didn't have to, not anything was going to catch myself on. And uh, yeah, it, uh, they worked out perfectly. So if you're interested in knowing how to turn a metal ruler into a set of cross stands, I'll get you to refer back to the video where I first created the IKEA hobo stoves, because uh, I do explain how to do that. It's a pretty simple process. So they will sit on top of our stove just perfectly. In fact, they provide me just a little bit more offset than the original aluminum wires did. So that should allow me, I probably could even feed in pieces of wood from the top, although I do have feed ports cut them the size of both stoves. So that does wood work, but it should allow for more uh, ga off, not off gassing, but more ventilation at the top of the stove so you get a more uh, thorough burn or a more clean burn that way. All right, now that's one thing. I'm still waiting to get to the modification we're going to test out today because there is a couple other things I wanted to show you. Set those aside. So also in that video where we talked about this uh, Luxata Little Bug inspired stove, one of the comments was of course is that I had it on the stone and when I lifted it off all the hot coals were there. And the, the issue with that is of course that if you're not on fire safe surface such as mineral soil or uh, a stone surface then you run the risk of having those hot coals sinking into the duff and potentially creating a forest fire later. So you want to be able to protect the forest floor and not create a fire if at all possible. Well of course you just don't want to do that at all. So people had made a number of suggestions from aluminum pie plates to uh, tin foil pie plates to any number of things and I'll show you what I came up with. Uh, I have not actually used it although I've used it in other, uh, for other stoves but this is a piece of aluminum flashing. I cut it large enough that it would fit inside the package that the, the Luxata stove came with and add negligible weight but it will sit nicely on top of uh, the stove will sit nicely on top so all edges are covered. Now how much protection the aluminum will offer it's I'm not sure you know it's one of those things I'm going to have to test out how long it will last again I don't expect it will last as long as stainless steel would uh, I expect it will do better than tin foil or not tin foil aluminum foil will but it certainly is not going to last forever and I thought there is probably something else I could do to further protect the earth underneath. And I have a couple of ideas. One was to use a piece of carbon felt underneath this. Piece this on top of the carbon felt. And that would give heat insulation away from the ground. Do you know I've done that before with another stove that uh, I'll be bringing to you at a later point. And what I found is it worked perfectly. But the heat from the stove transferring through the carbon felt drew moisture out of the ground. So by the time I picked up the carbon felt, it was soaking wet. It was really an interesting phenomenon. So, you know, it, it works, but it could work better. Here's something else that might work. This is something I picked up at our dollar store, Dollarama, here in Halifax. It's a, a silicone trivet or a pot stand, you know, something you would place a hot pot on. And it's a little bit big. It's, you know, there are thinner ones that you can cut up and make smaller ones. I just wanted to use this for an example. But if you place your tin foil or your pie plate or whatever else on top of that, 
now you have a greater zone of protection around the outside and you're definitely going to protect the earth from any heat transfer through that little bottom plate. So that's one modification I wanted to bring to you. This is extremely packable. Uh, this is a little bit more bulky, although, like I said, you can get thinner versions of this. And, uh, you know, it's multi-use. You can pick up pots for it, put hot pots down on it. You can use it to grab things off of the fire with, so it does have value that way. All right, the more recent video where I was using one of the vegetable steamer stoves, one comment that somebody had made, and I can't speak to it yet because I'll have to do further testing is because the two stoves were so close to each other when the, when the wind was blowing through in this direction that the viewer wondered if the excess heat that was being blown off of the IKEA was adding to the heat of the vegetable steamer and maybe bringing the water to a boil faster as a result. Good point, good question. It's something I'll have to do a little testing on. My experience with this vegetable steamer is that they work extremely fine, extremely well, and surprisingly well. Is it fast, actually truly faster than the IKEA? Well, I'll have to go back and test that again, but they were so close in performance that I'd have to think that the difference would be negligible, but that's worth testing over again. All right, so what I wanted to show you this time was Here's another option where you can combine a very inexpensive thrift store find with something that's not expensive to start with, which is the IKEA Little Bug Stove, and just set it down inside. Now you have a base that you can use for your stove with good airflow underneath, well protected all the way around the outside. If you just want that extra zone of protection, you can open it up. And you actually have two stoves, I guess. So you have the vegetable steamer is a stove, and you also have the little bug, or the Luxata stove, that you can put together. You can just see the endless combinations, of course, windscreen for alcohol stoves. I actually had somebody suggest in an earlier video, maybe you could use that as a cooking grill on top. Uh, yeah, why not? That's actually not a bad grilling surface that you could use right on top of something like the uh, looks at a little bug inspired stove. Okay, so those are the couple of modifications or updates that I wanted to give you. Let's get down to the main show itself, which is the IKEA wood stove. Now I've preloaded this with wood, by the way, just to save a little bit of time. So what does happen when you place this down on top? Well, what's nice about having these conduit clamps uh, around the outside is that it holds the uh, Luxata stove a fraction of an inch off of the ground. That's not what's important, is that it holds it in place. So when this is set up, let's see if I can show you this. It's gonna be hard to show you without, uh, you're not getting a true representation because I'm probably holding it slightly out of alignment, but there is about 3 16 of an inch clearance between the side of the IKEA and the Luxata stove. That's pretty good. Now. What I'm hoping to see is gasification where air is being drawn in through the bottom of the Luxata stove, running up the side, and then being drawn into the Luxata stove through the holes all the way around. Now, true, it's not closed at the top like a wood gas stove normally is, forcing all the air to have to enter in through the stove. I will lose some hot air up through the outside. I guess we'll just have to see how this works and does it make an improvement. So, as I mentioned, how am I going to compare this stove? By the way, I will be using the new stainless steel pot stands on top of this one. How am I going to compare one stove against the other? With another IKEA hobo stove. So this is the IKEA hobo stove. I cut with dual feed ports, one on each side, slightly offset in height, to imitate the feed ports on the side of the Gen 2 firebox stove. So this also came up, actually this is the IKEA I compared the firebox against, so uh, that's what I'm going to be using. So what am I going to be doing with that? I'm going to be placing two pots of water on, or a pot of water on each stove, two cups of water, and we'll see how long it brings to, comes to a boil. So very quickly, I'm going to set the fire going in the stoves. I think what I'll do, rather than uh, have you watch that again, is I'll get the fire going, I'll bring the, you back when I go to put the pots of water on, and then we'll start the timer. That'll just save a little bit of video time. So I've repositioned the camera so that I can give you a top-down look, because this is not quite what I had expected to see happen. But uh, that's, I guess, what's always fun and interesting about when you conduct these tests is you come up with an idea, you think it's going to work a certain way, and uh, you're sometimes you're surprised, sometimes pleasantly, sometimes just plain surprised. In this case, 
I guess I'm just a little bit surprised. Um, it's starting to even up now, but I lit both stoves at the same time with the same amount of wood, the same amount and same type of fire starter. And what you can see, hopefully, is that the IKEA that has the Luxata little bug stove wrapped around it seems to be more fully engaged as far as the wood goes. And it looks to be a, a much more controlled burn. Now that's uh, the more controlled burn I was hoping to see, this full engagement. I didn't expect to see that this uh, this point. The other Lixada stove, it's working well. It's burning just the way I would hope it would, but it uh, the wood is just now getting engaged. But at least they're both engaged to the point where I can put the pot of water on and start the timer. I'm going to do that. Uh, I'll start the timer. I'm going to end up putting a windscreen around the outside of it because there is a bit of a breeze kicking up in my backyard. And I'll start the timer, and when it uh, comes to boil, that's when I'll bring it back. All right. 3 minutes 40 seconds. The unmodified IKEA is got a good rolling boil. Actually, I think they both have. Yep, good rolling boil on both of them. So I'm going to say that the time was pretty much the same for both stoves in terms of bringing water to a boil, which is part of the test. Take oh, those, those things get hot. Take that one off. I'm going to reposition the camera, see if I can get a more of a straight down look at the fire. Uh, yeah, let me do that before we even start to make any comments on how they're burning. All right, I'm hoping that I can show you this the same, uh, give you the same view I'm seeing. At this point, it would appear the unmodified IKEA has more flame, resulting in more heat being produced. Pretty much what I had expected to see uh, in the modified IKEA, the one that has the Luxata Little Bug Inspired Stove set down over the outside. I am not seeing gasification take place, and by that I mean I, I am not seeing air being drawn in through the sides of the stove, creating secondary jets and doing a better better job of combustion as far as the the unburnt volatile gases are. Actually, there's no smoke from either of these stoves. A good reason for that, of course, is that it is kiln dried hardwood and the vertical stand of the wood inside the vertical orientation means that they're going to burn very hot, very fast anyway. So, yeah, and as far as consumption of the wood, they both seem to be about equal. So at this point, I'm not seeing a real distinct advantage to having the Luxata Little Bug on the outside of the uh, Kia Hobo stove. Now, I have negated some of any potential advantage by putting the, the windscreen around of it. But I guess it wouldn't matter what style stove, I probably would have put a wooden screen around it anyway because you do need to protect, especially the gap where the between the, pot, the stove and the pot to make sure you don't lose too much heat through side breezes. So I guess the only thing left to do now is just let these burn down to ash and see which one burns out first uh, so we can get an idea of uh, total consumption or how quickly the consumption of wood goes. Okay, I did decide to bring it back a little bit early, earlier than waiting for the wood to burn out completely because I removed the windscreen. I just wanted to kind of double check and see what the effect wind directly on the two stoves would have and it does confirm what we believe would take place and so there is value in adding the Luxata and what has happening hopefully the it's not a strong wind it's only a light breeze here but you can see hopefully that there is quite a bit of flame being pushed out of the side of the uh, Kia stove through all the holes around the outside which would indicate uh, that's the unmodified one on the left uh, so which would indicate that we're losing a lot of our heat out through the side and it's not being directed upwards towards the pot. Now, if you look at the one on the right, the one that's modified with the Luxata Little Bug Inspired Stove, we're not losing any heat out of the sides or very, very little. I see the occasional uh, jet of flame come out of the bottom feed ports or the bottom uh, air holes. That's just when downdrafts occur. But for the most part, all the heat is being directed upwards. So, what that would lead me to believe is that with out a windscreen, there is a real advantage to having the Lexada 
little bug inspired stove wrapped around the outside of the IKEA stove. With the windscreen as I did with the boil test not a real big advantage. Uh, yeah I think you can probably see now there's even more wind being picked up and heat, flame being dragged out of the side of the unmodified stove. I'm also starting to notice that it's consuming its wood faster likely as a result of all that extra breeze being put through it. But uh, well that's why you do these tests to see what kind of results you're going to get. So now I will let it go down to a flame out and bring it back at that point. Okay flame out for the two stoves occurred pretty much exactly the same time. There might have been a slightly longer burn time to the modified IKEA, the one that has the Lixetta Little Bug stove popped down over the outside of it, but not, uh, not significant. What I can say though is that there is more coals, glowing coals, left in the modified IKEA than there is in the unmodified one. Again, not significant, but there is more there. All right, well, not exactly what uh, the results I had hoped for, but still interesting. And I think there's enough here that I can draw at least a few conclusions. And uh, once these stoves are cooled down, I will close the video up. All right, so what can I say about the IKEA Hobo stove that was modified by placing the Lixada Little Bug inspired stove down on top? Well, what I had hoped to take place was wood gasification. So air would be drawn in through the bottom ports of the Lixada up the sides of the IKEA and in through the holes so that heated air would mix with the combustion and create a more efficient burn. That's what happens in a regular wood gas stove. I didn't see that happen here. I was a little disappointed. You know, a little disappointed. It's not the end of the world because was there any benefits gained from doing this? Well, maybe a few. One of the things that I think may be considered a benefit by adding these two stoves together is that without a windscreen, around the outside, which I like to use if I have it at all, if I have it available to me. Without the windscreen, this prevented a lot of heat loss from wind pushing flame and heat out through the side of, I of the IKEA, which was the original reason for adding this in the first place. So it does do that. I'll give it that. And it's a very lightweight, very inexpensive addition to the IKEA. Mind you, you are spending more money on the Luxada than you would on the IKEA if you bought your components at the thrift store. So is it worth the extra money? For me, no, it's not. It did improve the performance without a windscreen, but then again, I almost always have a windscreen with me. I try to have a windscreen with me. If I don't bring one with me, I tend to use a rock formation around the outside of it or something, some way of blocking the wind so that I get better performance out of the stove regardless. Uh, were there any other benefits from this? Not so much from this, but I was pleased with the performance of my ruler turned into a set of cross stands. So once again, if you're looking for a set of cross stands for your IKEA or for any other stove you want to put these on, I don't think you can do much better than going to the Walmart, picking up for 97 cents, at least that's the Canadian price, for one of those stainless steel rulers. Uh, they cut so easy with the hacksaw. I don't know why I didn't think of this before, but I'm glad I thought of it now, and I'll be uh, doing that with all my future IKEA builds is using these. There's no deformation, no warping or anything. So uh, yeah, it's not a long-term test. I know I'll have to see how it works over a number of burns, but if this is any indication, which I think it probably is a good indication, this is going to stand up to the test of time. And you know what? Again, if it does warp and I can't use it because it's too warped to use, I'll buy another one at 97 cents and we'll do it again. Okay. I'm going to open it up. What do you have to say about this test? Adding the Lixada little bug inspired stove to the outside of the IKEA. Should I continue with the thought of adding some type of a wrapping, a more permanent wrapping, top riveted or riveted on somehow to the outside of the IKEA? I think I'm probably going to try that anyway just to uh, see if there is a difference. There's just more work involved with it, but you know, it's, it may be worth the experiment to see uh, if it'll make a difference in performance. Any other suggestions you have for stove comparisons, modifications to any of these stoves, any other videos you'd like to see, please put them in the comments section below. But until next time, get out and explore and take that path less traveled. It'll make all the difference. Bye for now.